This one has been really, really tough. And I want to start my tribute video by thanking other commentators and creators, Michael's friends and people he worked with that made these videos. Because I'm sure I don't speak for myself when I say it's been really helpful for the fans to process this tragic loss. And I'm sure all the comments and tweets from fans have been like a good emotional support system for the ones that were close to him. And I was listening to a live stream on the Jacobin the other day that really helped me. They like Anna, Matt, David, Vetchia, Joshua, Ben, and Nando, and just seeing all the different types of people they had really amazing things to say but they all have this like common good about them and it really highlighted how special a person Michael Brooks is but with that said you see all the people that Michael inspired and you think of all the laughs he's caused over the years this just makes it hurt that much more if anyone couldn't tell already Michael was a big inspiration and motivation for this show for this channel and here's a few quick stories I want to tell you where I painted a world map on my living room wall and I learned all the country's names and the flags and their locations particularly because well, one it looks pretty cool and two to help me keep an eye on what's going on in the world and If you see any what do you mean videos with a big blue and black world map, you know that's the what do you mean internationalism, which can't compare to the TMBS internationalism, but it's probably obvious that those videos are partly inspired by Michael. And what I mean by partly is I would be yelling about this And what's happening in other countries, even if I wasn't fortunate enough to ever discover TMBS. But Michael's show just made me better at it. I've always cared about people and I've been made to feel like that it is a weakness. But Michael helped me realise that's, that's one of my strengths. And another story is I flew from South Australia to New York City for the first live TMBS show, and I'm so glad I did that. Michael took the time to thank me for coming and told everyone around and introduced me to be like, she came from Australia. And while I was over there, like in that hotel room, that's when I contacted the Australian Progressive Party and started to get the ball rolling for my run in the federal election. And here's the rest of my tribute my personal tribute to Michael Brooks, a hero, a mentor, a friend. I put together some sound clips of times according to the show and the time Michael interviewed me and of course some of his impressions. Hey, what's on your mind? Um, I was calling just because uh, there's a situation happening in Australia and I figured Americans be the best to talk to about it. Where what's happening? Uh, was it the S? Uh, what was it called here? The S I F A Shooting Industry Foundation Australia is like putting out some really concerning ads and like backing particular parties and just what was it? It's like the answer for the overwhelming crime. And then you look into it and you see like that's a gun lobby company. Why are they? And I'm pretty sure that they just. Well, I've read a few articles. They're taking straight up notes from the um. What's yours? The NRA. The NRA. Yeah, exactly. What is the? What is this called? It's called the. Oh, we got it. We got it up here. They say Australia's NRA inspired. Yeah. Okay, I see. And they're funding the Conservative Party in Australia. Doesn't Australia have pretty tough gun laws? Yeah. So the one of the first things it says here on um to own a gun to go get the license is uh the uh, personal protection. Not a valid reason. 
Like you, you can't have one in your house just because you know you're scared of something. You have to be a, a hunter or a, right. you know on a farm. Yeah, that makes sense. All right, I'm gonna look into this more because we're gonna find out, try to find out who's funding this and what the connections to the United States are. Stuff was happening in Brazil too. I mean, I think we're trying to export this. All right, I'm sorry that you're getting more garbage from us. I apologize. The Shooting Industry Foundation of Australia. But we will cover this more. Thanks a million for the call. No, thank you. You have a lovely, lovely weekend. You too. Take care. Jesus Christ, you, we can't. I mean, imagine, what do you think a gun company thinks when they look at Australia? They say, a market opportunity. Yeah, yeah. A, a colonialist nation yeah. with a bunch of white people that a don't have guns. A bunch of white people, a bunch of race issues, a bunch of, yeah. Australia is a ripe market for that bullshit. But when was the, the buyback? What was that, the 90s in I think Australia? It was, I thought it was even more recent. 90s or 2000s. It was 90s or 2000s. Wasn't that yeah, long ago? I mean, it was just like it's so recent. It's like I around Columbine or something that back, like that, yeah. right? Yeah. But I they had right. a mass shooting, and they just were like, like we're, we're not going to deal with this, anymore. mate. Yeah. Let's just deal with it. Right. They just dealt with sorted. it. Sorted. Right. It's sorted. sorted out. It's sorted. Many people don't recognize, Sam, that that is evil in the world. No, I think people. Yeah, I think that's probably. And I think if you look at my, you don't think that the Republican experience set and skills that I bring to the table. As so I wait continue, a second. are you suggesting that uh, you, I know, right that, wing Nelson Mandela, are going to run for the Republican primary nomination? I know that liberal hosts like to interrupt and be disrespectful. <laughs> Uh, Australia passed this bill. We've been calling it the AA bill, which I think in long is um, telecommunications and other legislation access or assistance and access, which is just pretty much um, uh, getting rid of encryption where they want the Australian Federal Police to have access to encrypted messages. And, um, yeah, there's, there's one part of it where they just pretty much use this to filibuster the fuck out of it to stop refugees from getting medical help. But then right. the other side of this is that, that I found an article where it even says the five eyes, which is like the five countries where they're just surveillance. Okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah those are yeah. a big deal. The five eyes I think we're going to do an illicit mm -hmm. history on because that's the intelligence sharing network of, yeah, of Australia, United States, Canada, UK, and New Zealand. That's a big deal. Yeah. Oh, good. I'm glad I'm not going insane. No, no, that's a big deal. <laughs> well, I'm in, I'm interested in uh, ideas, and, uh, uh, well, uh, yeah, but, um, uh, yeah, I'm interested in ideas. Sorry, uh, Ange has her own YouTube channel, so we're going to share some of that content as well, because uh, uh, oh, keep, so keep us on the Australia connection. No, thank you. It's good work, and that's his act, and, and on some practical level, honestly, like, as much as is possible, there are, there are, you know, there's obviously people like us, and then there's people like Majority Report and Secular Talk and Benjamin Dixon and so on, um, who and obviously the Young Turks. But there's also plenty of channels uh, like yours that are actually like that do like smart, good work and are you know just starting to grow. And part of this stuff in terms of, resp I mean, this isn't a policy response, but on some level you just gotta kind of flood the end zone, I think, in terms of just basically putting energy behind good content, period. Uh, flood the end zone the way Missouri thank you, thank you. did to you. <laughs> thank you, day. Ange. I hope you have a lovely, lovely week. Thank you, Peace. Ange, appreciate the call. Look, Sam, I feel like you've been very dismissive of the Bernie or Bust crowd, and oh. you haven't taken seriously the numerous voter allegations of fraud and the Associated Press colluding with my wife's campaign. Now, you got to understand something here. It's mm -hmm. crucial. There are over 30 FBI agents investigating my wife right now. You don't think that doesn't end up in an indictment? I, yeah. She's going to lose to Trump. <laughs> Shillery, release the transcript. It is odd that uh, that Bill Clinton would be a Bernie or Buster. I think well, people are surprised to hear that. I mean, if she couldn't satisfy me, could she satisfy the country? <laughs> Hashtag Bernie or Bust. <laughs> I mean, look, look. It's just odd. You know, the thing is, you say, vote for the lesser two evils. Well, guess what? I don't want to vote for evil anymore. I see. <laughs> uh, and Matt, I'm going to kind of throw to you on the gulag because this is a very lek centric gulag um as you know as you may know boris epstein is a sort of supremely untalented uh commentator on sinclair and sinclair as you know is the 
far right, uh, you know, extremist local cable company that that pushes Republican propaganda now for Trump, but well before Trump. Bless you. And uh, Boris Epstein, I mean, I don't know. I, I mean, I know he had a Trump association, but I have no clue how he got where he is. And he's the guy who does the like, here is line at his bottom. Uh, Donald Trump is overturning the carts that are made of fruit. And the Democrats say no. But the tax cuts will continue because love America. And, you know, he's, he's you know, he's, he's certainly like a, you know, he's kind of a Trump toady D-lister, but he's fun to make fun of. And Matt has kind of made a little project of correcting Boris on Twitter when he lies or is fascistic. And uh, Matt, take it from here. This is just to set it up. This is when apparently uh, you caught Boris's attention here. Yeah, well, Boris was uh, talking up himself as a uh, somebody was ta called him a Russian guy, which is a bit Russia phobic, but we can table that. Uh, and Boris Epstein was talking about the tolerant left. So I made a Trump joke, not sending their best. And Boris responded by saying, that's funny, Matt. Now when you have uh, any modicum of achievement, instead of just being sn a snarky nobody on Twitter, get back to me. And I would just like to point out to Boris Epstein the disparity between our our uh, respective YouTube pages. So so, well, well, so just to be clear here, <laughs> let, let's, let's just really set this. So already, obviously, I take exception on my friend and colleague's behalf, Matt. Obviously, he... He produces a couple of uh, shows with certainly far more organic success than anything Boris Epstein has ever done. He's also, you know, uh, I don't want to be a credentialist, but he's a master's degree holder. He's also in all the ways that uh, Boris Epstein, I'm sure, would dismiss. But like, you know, trying to be a good human being and other things like that, that uh, maybe we should also think about when we measure somebody's achievement. So but you found something here, though that just goes straight to a wedge issue between you and Boris. And this is pretty fucking devastating. Matt, what is your research revealed about your arch nemesis? Well, it revealed that Boris Epstein, despite being pumped, forced into homes, uh, the Sinclair Network, That's I'm not right. sure exactly how many stations are in that. I should find that out. But Boris's YouTube page is, uh, it's not doing very much. And it's not because he's not active. Uh, he's put up a couple of videos today. Uh, 11 hours ago and seven hours ago, and they have a combined 20 views. Ooh. Um, Ooh. <laughs> and uh, and, I, and I, let me, I'm sorry, let me just stipulate. Look, if you're busting your ass, making your own DIY, like mm -hmm. we, as an example, we talk about, um, uh, you know, I, I, there's a lot of people. If you're, if you're busting your ass doing a bottom-up YouTube channel, you have no institutional backing you don't have a fucking television show um <laughs> my point is that the, the inherent diss here is not 15 views so, on a youtube channel it's 15 views if you have a fucking tv platform and you're telling somebody that they're a loser on twitter sinclair has 193 outlets in nearly 80 markets so boris has about a little over uh, well under two but over one subscriber per m each Sinclair market. So that's a pretty impressive. And I just wanted to post the um, Literary Hangover YouTube page so we can point out that I got about five times, nearly six times, <laughs> the amount of subscribers <laughs> that he does. And my long uh, podcast about things like um, <laughs> Anne Bradstreet's poetry <laughs> and um, The House of Seven Gables. And I got Democracy and Chains. That one's doing a bit better. But they all have over you know hundreds of, uh, of views. So... Boris, I mean, I don't know if this is a modicum of achievement, but maybe we should have a dial resume our dialogue. Yeah, it seems like a resume. I want to just also uh, let me do because I like to plug talented uh, folks in our broader network. But I think uh, Ange from Australia, I believe. Can we look it up? I think it is what what do you mean? I believe is the name. Uh, I think that's the name of the channel. What do you mean with a. Uh, an exclamation point and a question mark. And again, Boris Epstein has a Sinclair channel and he has YouTube videos he's getting about 15 views on. I believe 
yeah, I think that's it. Yeah, so Ange is, is, is so Ange, who is not on Sinclair, does not have cable te- uh, connections, but she is part of the TMBS militia. She's crushing Boris per view on these videos. Yeah, the views are up. Uh, she's got fewer subscribers, but I mean, so, well, like yeah. like we said, Boris is forced into people's homes. Yeah, every Boris day. is literally forced <laughs> into people's homes across the country. So uh, I and I think we can get Ange uh, up above Boris to be honest. Yeah, let's get a yeah. Go subscribe to Ange's channel immediately, and obviously subscribe to Matt's channel. So Matt Leck, who literally posts audio polls of in uh, very smart, very interesting. Everybody should be listening to become a patron, whatever. But there's uh, no visual content. There's really, no there's no visual. I mean, you're audio waveform. You're listening to an audio waveform of a pretty intellectually demanding conversation on the social origins of various literary products is dominating clickable YouTube political content for pro-Trump propaganda on YouTube. Boris, sad. Hashtag boot Boris. Hashtag boot Boris, sad. (laughs) And that is why my friend the gulag and i don't even want to get really petty here and compare them to tmbs's numbers on youtube oh well i mean i can't I mean, even do shit. those numbers yeah let's you know yeah. let's just go to the youtube channel on tmbs what the well, fuck? i know Why we're not? at we're at twenty six thousand subs so let me do this math here all right um so tw- I, and i i don't even know how to do math like this anymore but twenty six. but you look very confident while you do divided this you're, by you're typing confidently in your phone. <laughs> <a smart phone>. <laughs> yeah <laughs> Yeah, go to Boris. We're actually at, yeah, you know what? We basically have 10 times. Okay, 10 times. All right. Sorry, Boris. Flex. Or wait, is it no. 100 times? I think it's 100 times. Yeah, right? it's 100 it's times. It's like 200, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Ooh. Ooh, Ooh, Boris. Ooh, ooh. Damn, homie. You was never the man, homie. <laughs> we almost He's almost too small for us at this point. Well, yeah. no, I'm going to kill Well, I don't believe in this whole punching down business, but I guess we could be accused of punching down. Well, no, but you can never punch down against somebody who's handed a cable outlet. Show. Yeah, exactly. And I'm not going to yeah. be done harassing him. So. Yeah. Goddamn right. <laughs> Someone needs to get... <laughs> Someone needs to pay the price for blasphemy around here. All right. Let's Final see. year. Psych. Just getting started. Salting up in these, baby. Okay. Well, we're All right. Well, I'll walk bar. Yes. Well, thank you. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here. You're with the crew and with Ben Burgess. Hi, guys. So you, in addition to having a dope YouTube channel, which we've talked about, are running thank for you. office in Australia. What, what party? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm a total Australia politics novice. What party are you running for? What office are you running for? And how did this happen? This is awesome. All right. Well, I'm running for my local seat for the House of Representatives. And in Australia, we've got 150, I think 151 now. And the seat I'm running for has had the same guy for our, like, right-wing major party there for 26 years. So, for, like, longer Jesus. than I've been alive. And he's retired now after becoming our defense minister and making – a nice lot of cash from the Saudis. And so he's retiring. And I figure if there's any time that ever, now's my chance. And I'm running for a, a new party that's really small. There's like five, six of us, the Australian Progressive Party. That's awesome. So how did you decide to run? Like, what was the process? And how and, and oh, like, how did you get on the ballot and stuff? Like, how does it work? Oh, I'm here. Well, it's... Uh, because we have our ranked voting and I've already got a few pictures sent to me where they put a number one next to my name. It was a good feeling. That's awesome. And it'd be a thousand Australian dollars to get on the ballot. Um, but now it's 2000, <sighs> but it's really unusual. They don't even ask you for ID. Like it's harder to get benefits from the government than it is to get on a ballot paper. Hmm. That's weird. <laughs> you literally yeah, just like, throw down 2000 bucks and you're on the ballot. Uh, yeah. If you like have the right, um, information about where your parents are from because we had this whole big d- dual citizenship thing. So pretty much, yeah, I was enrolled to vote. I'm only an Australian citizen and I had some money to throw down and I'm on the ballot for my district. That's amazing. What are you running on? What are your, what are you, I mean, what are the main issues in Australia? Like, and what do you um, want to do? Well, we, considering our current prime minister, he was the guy that thought it would be fun to walk around the house with a lump of coal going, it won't hurt you. Yeah, look, it's just coal. 
So, uh, wait, what's his name again? Malcolm Turnbull? Uh, Scott Morrison. It's Scott like Mar we what is um, Australia's healthcare system like? Uh, good. It 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 it's it compared to what you guys are dealing with. Yeah, like living on cloud nine. But we have got some gaps where like people will go like under for cancer treatment and such and depending on their situation so that's been a focus on the in this election between the two major parties you know i remember i think i've told this story before but you know just like see i mean seeing this guy there was a, basically a walking we're walking the street this guy you know he was drunk he was tipped over he took a pretty bad fall and we went over to check him out um and he was, you know, okay. Like he was okay. He was, and he was okay and forceful enough to sort of thank us for stopping and checking him out. And then like really forcefully being like, do not call an ambulance. Oh right? yeah. Like don't do that. That's how sick this country is with healthcare. It's disgusting. We do have something similar like that here, but it's like you have ambulance cover, which is just like another right. insurance thing, and you won't get slugged $800. Um, but then it, it's to more of the health thing, which I'm concerned about is because we built a brand new multi, who knows how much dollars, a hospital in Adelaide city center, and four people died while building it. I know people, because working in the construction game, because I'm a tiler, they've walked off because of the safety was just... Yeah, four people died while building a hospital. I'm like, I'm, they just cut all the regulations for building sites and everything to nothing. And it's like, well, there's a problem I can see that I think should be attended to, yes. especially when you're not putting enough nails in the wall. What happens when a wall falls on a patient? Jesus yeah. Christ. <laughs> Things like that that I don't think because, you know, <laughs> they'll just do it because they need to because they'll get a good review on Yelp. No, I'm pretty sure you do it if you're told you have to do it for the reasons. <laughs> Oh, you know, a political it. candidate that can include a Dave Rubin diss is very appreciated here. <laughs> uh, I caught that. I appreciate that. How's the campaign going? I mean, how's knocking yeah. on doors and building um, support? We're slowly filling in every letterbox. I think we've done about, out of the 20,000 we printed ourselves, probably about 8,000 have done so far. Wow, how big is That's the area? Amazing. Um, Do you really, uh, how just, big is the area? It's That's a lot of work. Sorry, go ahead. I mean, how many voters, uh, I mean? Yeah, how many voters? Oh, from my math, from what, looking at how it went down the last um, election, the guy who got in, because I think just mainly muscle memory after 26 years, people just go, <laughs> yeah, same guy. Um, he got in with 50,000 votes. And and here it's mainly if I get 4% of the vote, I get my money back at least. And <laughs> but yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm... Oh, I love it. And when it, when are people voting? When's the election? Uh, May 18th. But we have pre-polling and I've like uh, put information out on my page on how and where people can go do that. And there's postal voting, which has been good because my parents have already voted for me. And uh, May 18th is election day on a Saturday, which is, you know, because we've thought about it here. Right, <laughs> right. There's a lot of ways in which all of Australia's fuckery and fascists and everything and crocodile Dundee jokes, you guys, even Australia, which is probably the country that's closest to us in a lot of ways in the world, uh, not obviously not geographically, but I feel like there's some similarities. <laughs> uh, they've got the healthcare thing infinitely better. They've got Saturday voting. We don't uh, have guns. You don't have guns. They just got rid of them. Ben, you have a question? No, I was just going to say, uh, it occurs to me that like in the U.S. in the last couple of weeks, there's been all this controversy about allowing prisoners to vote and how horrible that would be for some reason nobody quite seems to be able to spell out. Right. Uh, but then you have a country that started as a penal colony and they seem to have <laughs> yeah. vastly yeah. more sensible social policies than ours in like every way. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> that's, that's a really good point. Uh uh, so, so Ange, will you tell people all the ways that they can find you, help out your campaign? And please also, for the hell of it, plug your YouTube channel again. The videos are real. I mean, Ange actually, like, makes, like, stock motion, like, video. Like, they're, they're properly told narratives, and you'll get a sense of things like the ecology of Australia. I always, I mean, I legitimately, I like to watch and check out things where, I mean, there's a lot of things I like, but even a fair amount of things I like, you know, they're sort of covering all the same things and there's a limited amount of time in the day and uh, you will learn something new in this channel. So, Ange, please do all of your all of your plugs, please. What do you mean videos? Um, yeah, W, D, Y, M videos. 
<laughs> on YouTube. So and yeah, like it's a, it's a bit slow at the moment, obviously with the well, campaign, right, but I did still course. find time to smash out twenty minutes worth of war crimes and crimes against humanity because you know you you can't let it like slip. You can't. I I personally I want a representative who's thinking about war crimes even when she's campaigning. <laughs> These are good candidates. Um, and like, yeah, because I have even put a video out about how the Australian voting works for both the Senate and the House, which I think is pretty useful right at this moment. But I also just want to say, you put out a guide on how people can vote. Like, I think every single, like Sanders should be doing that. That's really smart because it's confusing for a lot. I mean, it sounds yeah, like I it's even, simpler. I, even, I, I did it with um, a little shout out to you guys with my imaginary candidates I wrote out. There is a Michael and a Matt and a David and everybody. There's even a Ben. <laughs> It was a Burgess, wow. the Burgess fucking ship. <laughs> uh, and that's awesome. Obviously, we support you. And that's, I don't know, that's just really fucking cool. I hope that that's a, you know, signal. Like, people should be thinking about doing this. Run for school board. Run for town selectmen. Run for city council. Run for Congress. Like, do it. Can I also just say how in yeah. awe awesome. I am of your time management since, um, like, doing like vastly more technologically primitive videos once a week <laughs> and like, you know, doing some podcasts or whatever. Like I don't even have time to like do grading that piles up like, you know, <laughs> for weeks. Uh, I can't imagine doing everything you're describing, running for office. It's like, Oh yeah. And I also found time to put out this like really like high production value, 20 minute video about war crimes. Right. You know? Cause like, yeah. you know, uh, I, well you research and your letterbox at the same time. I can, I can walk and chew gum. I just research and then letterbox, letterbox, letterbox. It's great. <laughs> oh my God. Ange, we need you in office. Thanks a million for doing this. Seriously. No, thank you so thank much. You. Thank Seriously. you. This has been great. Thank you. Thank you. That's fucking awesome. Wow. A lot of people in our audience doing, in our community, excuse me, community, doing really amazing things. Like, we are absolutely all peers here. It's fucking awesome. Um, all right. Good morning, patriots. <laughs> Good morning, rebels. Ah. <laughs> <sighs> Those bits of sound obviously mean a lot to me personally, but I also think they're great because they capture what made Michael such an amazing person, his humour and how passionate he was about this movement because he didn't have a channel. He was, he was building a community. And like this movement, this community, just to make the world a better place, especially for people that have just been stomped on by the system. I could never thank Michael enough for everything he did for me and how much he inspired me. I know I'm not the only one that feels this way, but my heart goes out to his family, friends and other fans. And I have a promise to make to these people. I would like to say I promise that the TMBS work will always live on in WDYM just as in many other channels and podcasts. You heard it from the man himself. WDYM is part of the DMVS militia. You endlessly miss Michael. Rest in power. I'll see you in the post game.